A new event, a first-time experience, is about to confront the students of Lincoln School. The teen club is organizing a house, a new kind of party. A Gee, things are happening. Oh, and look, a real party for a change. Thanks. Mm. Let's go together, Cindy. Well, how do you know somebody isn't going to ask to take? Oh, do you think somebody might? Oh, golly, I'd be scared to death. Maybe we'd better go together, Cindy. Hey, George, how about it? You and your date. Who are you going to ask? Me? I don't like parties. I am not. Yeah, I too. I am not. Hi, boys. Hi. Hi, Hi, Coach. What's the big argument? Oh, Bill's kidding, George. He says he's scared to ask a girl to the winter party. You're scared to make a date, George? I never asked a girl to anything. Maybe you haven't, but you'll be wanting to someday. Look at it this way. Remember the first time you ever dived? Remember how you just knew you couldn't make that first plunge? But you did. After that, it was easy, wasn't it? Yeah, that's uh -huh. all right as far as diving goes. But gosh, dating's different. Sure, but you'll want to date someday, George. It's easier here where you know everyone so well. Later on, later on, it may be harder. Like taking your first plunge from the high dive. Diving into the social swim is a lot easier than it seems. It's just a matter of following a few very simple rules of etiquette, a matter, too, of having a little courage. After a morning of thinking it over, George decides to take the plunge. Oh, sorry. Hiya, Mildred. Hi. How'd you like Skip Davis's poster? Pretty good, huh? Yeah, pretty good. Want to be a nice party, maybe with the floor show and all. Yeah, sure will. Would you like to go? Huh? I mean, would you like to go to the party? You mean with you? Why, I guess so. That'd be okay. Sure. I'll have to ask at home, of course. Okay, I'll check with you at school tomorrow. Fine. Bye. Bye. George did make the date. Awkward, maybe, but the date is made. Here's Bill ready to make the plunge. Let's see how well he does it. Hello? Hi, Helen. What are you doing Friday night? Yes? Yes? Who is this? Why, it's Bill. Bill Jenkins. Oh, Bill. Well, hello. I was just wondering if you're busy Friday night. Friday night? Why, um... Why... No, Bill didn't do very well. First mistake, to think that everybody recognizes his voice. Second mistake, is it fair to extend an invitation without telling what it's all about? But Bill seems to realize that he did it the wrong way. Let's give him another chance. Hello? Hi, Helen. It's Bill Jenkins. Oh, well, hello, Bill. Fine, what's new? Today, the teen club's giving a party in the community house Friday night. Would you like to go with me? Oh, gee, thanks. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yes? Oh, I, I don't know. Did you know whether or not Barbara's going? I, I suppose so. Hold it. This is getting embarrassing for both of them. They don't know how to stop. The rule here is that the girl declines or accepts an invitation briefly and then says goodbye. If Helen had been older, she might have handled the telephone conversation something like this. Hello? Hi, Helen. It's Bill Jenkins. Oh, hello, Bill. Say, the teen club's giving a party at the community house Friday night. Would you like to go with me? Oh, yes, thanks. That sounds like a lot of fun. The party starts at 7.30. I'll call for you about 10 after. Fine, Bill. I'll be looking forward to it. Bye. Well, here it is, the dance night. Bill is well-groomed. That's the first step. His next problem is what to say when he gets to Helen's door. Bill wonders who's going to open the door. How do you do? I'm Bill Jenkins. I've come to call for Helen. Oh, yes. How do you do? Nice We've start. Been expecting you. Now let's do it again and suppose that Helen had opened the door. Hi, Helen. Gee, you look nice. 
Well, thank you. Do you like my new dress? Yeah. Well, come on in. That was unnatural. Any honest compliment is tops in date etiquette. Bill, this is my mother. Helen slipped up on her introduction. The rule here is the younger person is always presented to the older person. Try it again, Helen. Mother, this is my friend, Bill Jenkins. Hello, Bill. How you doing? Father, this is Bill Jenkins. He caddies at the municipal golf course. Maybe you've seen him there sometimes. How do you do, Bill? How do you do? Good. And Helen, by mentioning Bill's job, has started a lively conversation. But not every boy is as lucky as Bill. Let's see how his friend Dwight is making out. Dwight here is obviously on the spot. No one is being helpful. What do you talk about in a situation like this, he wonders. The weather? Pictures on the wall? What? The only thing on his mind right now is the party he's going to. Why not say something about the party? Uh, the party's gonna be fine tonight. There's gonna be a floor show. A couple of eighth grade kids are gonna get some invitations. There's a good piano player, too. Dwight found a good topic for conversation. You may wonder what to talk about all evening on a date, but the secret of easy conversation is getting off to a good start. And here, the girl can often take the lead. My, did Mother and I have a time at the hairdressers today? Oh, it was so funny. Now, do you think this is a good start? Hardly. What does Dwight know about hairdressing problems? Now, here's a good way of selecting subjects for conversation. George is thinking about them beforehand. George has chosen a good topic. It seems that Mildred enjoys telling about her new puppy. Here they are at the party. Bill is right on hand to wait for Helen. But poor Joan. Her date, Tom, has committed the unforgivable error of leaving his partner stranded. One of the secrets of having a good time at a party lies in trying to see that others have a good time. And while it's certainly reasonable and fun to relax for a while and just stand around, nevertheless, all boy huddles and all girl huddles carried on too long can get to be a bore. Crossing that wide dance floor and asking a girl to dance can seem frightening. But then so did that first dive. Here's an opportunity for Pete and Morris to break up this deadlock, to make the party fun. It's also a chance for them to add to their skill in friendly relations. For party skill, like diving skill, is gained by just one thing, by practice and more practice. An efficient committee helps to make a party a success by thinking of those who are interested in other things than dancing. part of the etiquette of dating is the problem of getting home on time. This is the responsibility of both boys and girls alike. Oh, gosh, I better be thinking about my deadline, George. You know parents. I have to be home by 10.15 or else. Yes, we'd have to leave right now if we want to make your house walking. But I made a deal with Bill's dad for a ride. We've got at least another 15 minutes. Oh, fine. Thanks, George. Bye. Bye. George sees Mildred right to her door. Mildred remembers to express her appreciation. Gosh, thanks a lot, George. I had a wonderful time. 
Okay, I enjoy it very much, too. See you in school. Okay, good night. Good night. And George remembers to wait until she's safely inside. And so, George's first plunge into the social swim comes to a successful end. It wasn't too difficult. All it required was a little courage and following a few simple rules of etiquette. Rules which are based on just one thing, consideration for the feelings of others. Politeness comes naturally when we are considerate. Lack of consideration can spoil our partner's good time. Planning things in advance can be a wise move too, whether it has to do with what to talk about or when to go home. By following these simple rules, all dating can be fun.